so that you know everybody learns in that so i'm glad that it's a fuse now uh, in terms of uh, yeah i think like uh, that's what we need right now first of all like i saw that channel like discussion where we have to kind of you know remove kind of false information and the other is uh, other is of course like disseminate information and, and and what can be done sort of uh, so that you know people can at least keep their hopes up so um one is, as I said, like, you know, I, I thought of, uh, before actually I joined this group uh, and I thought of telling you about it, I started that portal. I thought like, I'll put all the science uh, articles together. And, and this is a- uh, Can you send me that link real quick? Yeah, I forgot. Uh, I'll just send it in chat. It's still very much in the works because I, I was so busy in my own work. I, I never got yeah. a chance. And I'm sure like, every, that's true for everyone. Um, I don't know how you are managing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really like, yeah, it's all volunteering and everyone commits whatever they can in terms of resources and time. Some people are crazier and sacrifice their own, you know, health in a way, which I kind of like, I'm telling people, we need you in the long term. Please stay healthy. Please have enough sleep. Just like, don't, don't overstretch yourself. But yeah, like everyone's working 24 seven for free and it's just, insane power that we've got here yeah yeah no i think like uh you know and, and and the amount of stress on youtube must be huge because you, know, you have so many people to communicate with which is it's a very very large group so one thing uh so yeah i mean uh definitely we need a bit of organization at this point i think and which you have tried to run in slack channels but also like uh, and also maybe dan you know leading like say the vaccine trial the task pt that channel and, and things like that so you know people have like sub leaders so that you don't have to maybe communicate exactly. with everyone yeah um and and, and uh but uh there uh i guess like uh kind of step back and kind of make a kind of plan, you know, strategy plan, like, uh, which is, which is, uh, instead of people just, uh, and people are willing to try, which is fantastic. Um, and, and, and this is a great cause uh, that's, I, I saw your, um, you know, in Corona why like, uh, that you are essentially, this is for the people who would get more, most affected. So, so that's a, you know, good cause than just something, you know, esoteric or something. Exactly. So, um, but yeah, I think like if you can have a, a strategy outline uh, and, and, and like kind of a roster, uh, that, that could be. Yeah, or, or no, I, this whole thing is just like 10 or whatever days. I don't even remember how many days it, uh -huh. it is. But yeah, like it's, it's moving so fast that it's impossible to catch up, but we're doing our best. And obviously a lot of people are asking for the vision and direction. So right, right now we're kind of focused on addressing the Kaggle challenge in general and mm -hmm. working in those four tasks. But in reality, we've fully agreed that it's beyond Kaggle and it's all about the, the impact that we can provide to you know, everyone that is affected by this crazy thing. So it's, you know, that is the vision, that is the strategy from the high level. Obviously for details, there's just so much stuff we have to figure out. Like day by day, we add new like groups of people. Like we add lawyers. Now we have HR. Now we are wow. adding policy makers. And I'm like, what's going on? Like I've, <laughs> I've never managed like 700 people, you know, it's insane. But yeah, like the, the magic is that people self-organize and those leaders and those people that are self-organized into groups are really helping me to stay sane and you know not mm -hmm. drop that so that's the huge help of community uh i do think we'll converge to some more strategic planning down the down the road but for right now it's mostly like you know spark here spark there and then there's a fire and yeah. you know it takes people like you that just sent an illustration you know to slack channel and then someone picks it up and you know then there's a webinar and then after webinar, there's something else and the fire keeps, keeps growing. So let's, let's maybe figure out just in brainstorm right now, what could be that next stage? Like obviously first step was just illustrations. The second step webinar. Now I'm pretty sure like hundred people will see your video for sure. So how, how to make it to the next stage, how to make it thousand people. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, I think, uh, you know, one of the things is like when you have these large companies, they have a mission, right? And you have a mission to help people, but also like to, you know, make it more concrete. Um, 
you know, think of, I don't know if how Facebook started, things like that. But if you have a corpus, first of all, not just the DB that we have, but like a knowledge base, you know, and, and what are the questions that we are trying to answer? Because um, suppose like, you know, there's a lot of machine learning with uh, PubMed data, right? But uh, how does that maybe, you know, keep, uh, we should have like a goal, like suppose it is, how does that address this specific question? Like suppose a specific question is like, uh, um, of course, like say, it, 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 they would say like, is a medication helpful for, uh, for, uh, for this disease? But, but in reality, like uh, there are suppose several things that need to go in. One is of course, literature data. The other is, uh, you know, patient records, like the patient uh, health records or, or like whichever is, uh, you know, anonymized, like uh, that, you know, data, genetic risk factors and, and there are other things. You cannot just, you know, develop a drug yeah. based on- exactly. I mean, uh, Let me show you something real quick. Yeah. So are you, are you familiar with Kaggle at all? Yeah, yeah, I, I went to Kaggle. That's how I found. Actually, I went oh. to Kaggle and then I came across Coronavai. Okay. Uh, I didn't, uh, I mean, I think a lot of people might have come through this, but I, I, I did a bit of the data, you know, deep learning kind of stuff a uh, while ago, some, some kind of notebooks, but, but really I was just trying it out at learning at that point, you know, because yeah. Kaggle is a good place. I'm asking it. only because there are already people that never heard of Kaggle and are still joining us. So I, I need to make sure I, I have the right context. So basically uh, we're trying to address that specific thing that you just mentioned. Oh, great. In yeah. a way, um, you know, Kaggle define uh, these kind of abstract asks, right? Data mm -hmm. on potential risk factors, smoking, pre-existing pulmonary disease. But those are not really questions. That's just, you know, just thoughts that they, they've uh, produced for the uh, Kaggle competition. So yeah. what we are doing and you know the famous quote here the formulation of the problem is often more essential than its solution which may be merely a matter of mathematical experimental skill and i truly believe that's that's true here and the hardest problem to solve is actually defining a problem because we have hundreds of people capable of you know building uh, insanely complex technology if we define the problem correctly so, and we've tried to kind of reformulate those things as questions, like, is there an evidence about association of smoking as a factor with increased risks of COVID-19? And so we're going through that. It's a very hard um, challenge mentally because it involves a lot of like abstract thinking and putting things together, but I think we're, we're gonna get there. Yeah, this is great. Uh, and actually, I could add to that list. I was uh, in another conversation with uh, Randall. I think he was in the in the same webinar today. And uh, one of your questions, actually, uh, about the chloroquine, you know. Mm -hmm. So actually, I thought about this one simulation that is not being done. You know, there's a lot of SIR models and uh, survival uh, in infection recovery kind of those models. Uh, but uh, the thing is that biology is a, is a matter of probability, right? So uh, it is your shifting a ratio. You can never like completely block anything, right? Uh, when you say like a receptor block, it, they use the term these inhibits, like, you know, mm -hmm. there are many receptors, each cell has many receptors. And so uh, it just like you change, like how much, uh, how much of what you can do. So uh, a model of, um, uh, you know, how many cells, how many receptors, how many viruses make copies, how many you can block, you know, something like that is, is a, might be a new kind of model, which, which could be useful, but, with um, Randall, what he asked is, um, so there's this angiotensin receptor blockers, right? So ARB blockers. So they are receptor blockers which are used for hypertensive medication. So can we use them? Because, you know, like chloroquine, they could uh, inhibit entry. Now, what has been found is that people who, uh, and this is this is like China has this huge collection. Some of it they have made available. I think that's a, that's a great resource we could, uh, I don't know if you're already using, is that people who were on these uh, hypertensive medications, actually had uh, uh, more uh, damage even to the heart because what happened is if you're on a on a medication that is trying to block this uh, uh, receptor the body thinks that there's something wrong and it makes more of these receptors you know everywhere and so like even the heart muscle had some receptors and things like that so when the virus attacked it attacked even the heart and, and places like that and they had cardiac damage now on the other hand it's a double edged sword like uh, if if you uh, if it's an ongoing infection it's true that you try to block it it you will do some use but some of it is already inside and, and therefore some of it you know you'll have to have a combination and and i think a lot of uh, this is a this is a real question for a doctor like if you uh, you know 
uh, at what stage of the disease i mean of course like you have to mention uh, uh, you know maintain hypertension and uh, and all of those no, sorry uh, your blood pressure has dropped and things like that you have to maintain that but at what stage of disease do i use what combination and of course like there exactly. are these risk factors that that you're talking about so this is where i think like some kind of a uh, I don't know, like it's a combination of you know existing knowledge plus prediction, like predictive models. So, so that could be that could be a, a useful thing. Uh, but definitely a collection of every risk factor, and and not only that, uh, a, a a pathway. Like if smoking is. Let me show you something. Yeah. Um, hold on. Okay. So actually, yeah. Once we started kind of digest everything, and I started building this knowledge base. Uh, the mm -hmm. first thing that I decided, like, just to build some taxonomy and structure for this, right? Because as I wrote, we're not medical experts, which means we don't have very specific domain expert foundation for understanding underlying mechanisms of how it works and how it's different from any viral infection. Though we do know what viral diseases are. We know that they're diseases, first of all, and they're, well, quite viral. <laughs> so just, you know, using basic logic and things that you can uh extrapolate and this is how i decided to add stages of disease to this whole thing because when you're considering risk factors it's really you know risk factor factor for certain stage of disease and right. those are very different so mm -hmm. and then i also listed out the processes yeah, I, one thing i would mention is that 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 uh, that is that is a very good diagram but that doesn't apply maybe so say to hiv which is kind of can stay latent with you new for 10 years right so, yeah, I actually have no idea. <laughs> I just Google stages of disease. <laughs> yeah, 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 I'll tell you why. Because as we saw, like the virus is pretty much, it comes in, makes copies and out, and therefore like, and the immune system kicks in. So it's either one way or the other, right? Okay. Uh, like smallpox and all of that. But HIV is a bit different. HIV is also RNA virus like this. But what it does is that when it comes into the cell, remember like there's that part where it makes more RNA out of the RNA, mm -hmm. the HIV- Ribosome machinery. Uh, yeah, I mean, so, so there are two machineries. One is making RNA from RNA, which the virus mm -hmm. does. And it makes the protein from the RNA using the ribosome. And, and this is the, this it does. But HIV does something additional, which makes it different. It's called a uh, lentivirus for that. So what it does is that it, there's a thing that you can make uh, DNA to RNA, RNA to DNA. It's called reverse transcriptase. And in fact, in that central dogma, there was an arrow that was going the other way. There's mm -hmm. DNA to RNA, but RNA can also become DNA. And that's what HIV does. And then it, uh, that DNA can get inside the nucleus because nucleus, uh, only the nucleus has DNA. So the DNA gets in the nucleus and the, just like your cutter that for protease, the virus has the protease and something called integrase. So it cuts off a part of the DNA, inserts its own DNA, and then it's part of your genetic system, right? And it stays there for 10 years. Oh, it, wow. it's not, and, and then one day, like when it thinks, oh, you know, the time is good, like uh, then it comes out as RNA and then it does its whole thing of, you know, packaging and, and stuff. So what you're so, saying is that it can passively exist without any symptoms and then uh, magically appear, right? Yes, yes. I mean, like uh, depending on the conditions, like suppose like, you know, a virus is, it's not a very smart thing. It's, it's a pretty much trial and error thing, but it, 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 it has... It, uh, it has a, a lot of complexity, which you don't understand, but it, it is trying to survive, right? And, and not also kill its host. So uh, it, maybe the, it's not the right time the cell is not able to you know, have enough resources to make more copies of itself. So what it does is that it just says, okay, let me like take it easy for a bit. Let me just become a part of its DNA. And one advantage of being a part of your DNA is that you have a system that just copies your whole DNA if, if your cell replicates, right? You're never going to get lost. If you're an RNA outside, RNA is very unstable. RNA can get killed, degraded, and there's something. There's, the cell makes sure there's no loose RNA outside the cell. And even if it is, like there's uh, another message that I was uh, talking with uh, Randall is that the mRNA vaccine, you know, how does that work? So, so what the mRNA vaccine from Moderna, which is the top trial, is, is uh, happening is that it's unlike antibodies which, uh, which kill the cell. Like this mRNA is for the spike protein. It gets in uh, through some, uh, it's a fat droplet that's delivered. The, it comes in the cell, but the cell can recognize what's foreign RNA and it starts this interferon system, you know? So, so, mm -hmm. so, it, so essentially RNA, uh, RNA, if you're just an RNA virus and trying to live that way, it's, uh, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's uh, either you succeed or not. But if you can become a, a RNA to DNA, then it's, it's a better chance, like you can hang around. And here's the interesting part. 8% of our genome, at least 8% is from viruses. There are many viruses which have come into our genome and stayed there because during genetic uh, uh, you know, 
uh, replication and division, like especially during meiosis, which is, uh, and, you know, there is what's called recombination occurs. There's a swapping of uh, the different uh, parents' genes. And so uh, these genes can be, get fragmented. And also there's something called trans, uh, transpose and the jumping elements. Essentially, if you're in a DNA, yes, you get multiplied, but uh, things can change and, and your, your part is no longer sort of active. The, uh, the code can get broken. And once it's a, it's a broken code, it's just like software, it doesn't run. But so 8% of our uh, uh, thing is, is the, uh, uh, at least is viral. And, and they say that uh, this could be also uh, once a virus gets in your DNA, a virus also wants to make sure that other viruses don't get in. This is another thing is that you know, most of the bacteria in the body, like their pathogens are for other bacteria. When we get a strep throat, it's not that the strep throat is attacking us. It's, it's, it's in fighting with the other pneumonia or, or like whatever's going on in the throat. So the, so the virus wants to just, it just wants to replicate. It doesn't want to, uh, to let other viruses in. And that may be one of the reasons it's there uh, sitting in our DNA. And, and it's, it's, it's literally a driving force of evolution. Uh, they say that, uh, you know, there could be like the human chimpanzee split happened because like there was, we got hit by viruses. I read that article or something about the Neanderthals being affected by very specific viral, virus and that caused something. Yeah, I get what you say. Yeah, yeah, suppose like today in today's world or even HIV if it wasn't treated, what would have happened is that there's a group of people who are naturally immune to HIV. Nothing happens to them at all. You know, they don't get AIDS. And, and the people who do, and so like they become essentially different species. You know, speciation itself could have happened from because of this, and, and definitely immune system plays a, a big role. And the way immune system is not just immune challenges your, where you are, but also like the stuff that actually can sit, go and sit inside your gene. And so like, uh, we, we, we have come a long way, you know, with viruses. This, this is not the first time that it's doing its yeah. thing. And, and maybe it's, it's a part of a natural, uh, you know, processes of selection. So if you think of it that way, there are obviously like, uh, you know, natural mechanisms to fight it, but it's also like what nature is. Yeah, <laughs> you know, there is nothing more natural than nature. So whatever we do, it, it still uh, is the, the, the natural process. I agree. So, um, yeah, what I was going to um, show you, and maybe you'll, you'll get some feedback from me later for, for this specific uh, purpose, but we just tried to kind of explain the basic structure of what we're thinking. Like, there are types of risks, stages of disease, physical processes, then trying to answer the questions, then types of relations, and this is just some work in progress. But also, uh, what I was going to show you ah I, this was basically that that part like that we're trying to build this knowledge base uh for people that are not medical experts and not bio experts to navigate and build some form of uh, engines that operate with that so uh oh i remembered what i wanted to show you actually like we started working on a, on a complete uh, list of all possible risk factors Mm -hmm. And um, what we've decided is basically score them by the presence of the data and importance to the doctors. So here, and Maya has been, not sure if you've connected to her yet. She's leading the risk factors team. Okay. And she basically created this glossary of, you know, the topic, wow. topic is popular or not popular or somewhat popular. And she scored each of these. Mm -hmm which is, I think, is game changer in terms of prioritization. And then she also had a call with Rendell, uh, that MD physician, and he identified the, to the top things that he as a physician and other frontliners are looking for, first of all. So I think that's a, a huge thing that we've accomplished in terms of prioritization and figuring out what, what stuff to work with. And yeah. Yeah, this is, this is, this is, this is actually, this is, uh, I mean, a corpus like this would be very helpful and definitely like, you know, reach out to uh, uh, doctors. I know like JHU, Cornell, everybody has it, but uh, uh, I think like, uh, you know, a bigger systems are a kind of, uh, they don't move very fast. You know? Exactly. You uh, know, what's funny, like it's, it was actually very hard to compile this full list of risk factors. I don't know why, but there is no single place where these exist. And I had to scan through the papers 
and medical journals. Maya had to Google a lot and somehow we compiled this list. And I'm sure it's uh, not final and there are so many others, but there is no ultimate list for it. Yeah, no, no. I mean, that, that is because like maybe, I mean, science is not very well funded, you know, and also like people look at very specific things. One thing I would say is that uh, one thing we have to be careful with these risk factors is like, uh, uh, sort of uh, underlying, like, are they confounders, you know? For example, like with hypertension, as I was telling you, like, so people who have hypertension could be on ARBs, and ARBs could be leading to, you know, increased expression of ACE receptors, which has more places the virus is to bind. So it's a kind of confounding thing. So if you think of it, just hypertension, maybe just hypertension also could do that, but but uh, something that, that gives a more um, mechanical, uh, clear thing, right? So yeah. obviously now, if you're smoking, um, now that we know that it's a type two, you know, lung that is damaged, like so, is can we think of, you know, a, a more a more concrete way? And that way, like there can be more also publications which are, which are very focused on that, you know, because um, it, otherwise, like you get into, you know, sort of a, a, a retrospective sort of a, a population kind of cohort, like you know, these people smoked and, and so on and so forth, and and since like this is. Um, data actually we can actually even collect from the SARS and the MERS like if, if we can find yes. out and actually the current data set it has like eight percent of the articles which is a lot about the smoking so I think we have enough data across the MERS SARS and other viral diseases to actually extrapolate some some findings again we're we're still early in terms of understanding what the output will be we're kind of you know rushing towards it uh, but also taking steps back and understanding what's really a priority. And that was the major uncovering through the past two days. So Maya is, is leading this stepping back stage. I actually would love to have you join the risk factors team to whatever extent you, you have, because it sounds like you would be perfect fit for that one. You know, I would love to right now. I'm in the VT team and I have actually... Uh, you know, I told uh, Dan that I'll start maybe programming hopefully from tomorrow or something because I had to, you know, was busy with my own work. But I would love to join and um, uh, and he also asked me like whether I would be like a domain expert or, or uh, you know, more programming. Now, the thing is that I'm actually a programmer and I'm, I'm a computer programmer. <laughs> but this is, I find it fascinating nature and I study it. Yeah. Uh, but but uh, but uh, but uh, so I wouldn't say I'm a doctor or a geneticist or anything. Exactly. But... Just a critical thinker, you know, that's. <laughs> That's what we all do here. And suddenly being polymath, uh, you know that word? Uh, yes. it's, it's fun because you, you got to learn so much stuff, exciting stuff, and you immediately see the usefulness of all of that. Which is yeah, and, and, I, and I tell you, I'm sure like you're, you also have a, uh, what's, your technic, uh, what's your background I forgot to? My background, I have degree in systems of artificial intelligence. I worked in as a developer, as engineer, but then I uh, went into the venture world and co-founded the Venture Studio, which is a mix of startup incubator and consultancy. So mm -hmm. I'm coming from like applied AI uh, type of dimension. Yeah, no, I think like that is actually what is really missing in, 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 in the science field right now and, and that there is a lot of scope for it, you know. Uh, and and um, and that's actually uh, if you uh, you know have worked at Rockefeller and Mount Sinai, the thing is that they don't attract such talent, you know. And and the the uh, actually scientists are, are wanting to uh, have wanted to explore these uh, avenues, but they haven't attracted such talent mm -hmm. uh, because you know science is uh, not a hot topic yet, technology. Yeah, not profitable enough in the current uh, capitalistic engine. Let's, let's say that. Yeah, I mean, unless unless it becomes uh, this situation when it is like, uh, you exactly. know. Exactly, and that's why it's so fascinating. Like we're finally seeing like people waking up and seeing that, you know, we're, we're so well trained to think that all of these enemies and diseases are somewhere there, you know, far away and not touching us and we can, you know, proceed with our own lives. But coronavirus finally opened our eyes and told us that hey you know I'm here and I may as well kill uh, you all and you know that that's a wake-up call and suddenly everyone understands that it doesn't matter where you're from it doesn't matter how wealthy you are it doesn't matter like we're all in this together and you know we're we as you know organization or whatever word you, you call uh, use the f to call us we're we're creating this new something that is a first ever global collaboration of people that are truly united against the common enemy 
and we're we're crushing it like the the results the speed like it's amazing and i hope that we'll create this kind of template and case study for many other company or like groups of people to create the same thing and address those common enemies because there are so many of those there is hiv there is cancer there's diabetes all of these things even poverty homelessness but like you know for some reason as a society we've been trained not to care or care passively and now is the time to to change our and rewire our brains no, that that is exactly true you know somebody was telling me like it's, it's a bad dream i said no no what we were living in was a bad dream because we had inequality we had climate change and we thought it was fine and we could just you know go on with our lives but now uh the thing is that now that we are faced with reality like this is what reality this is what nature is because you know we were ignoring things because we were in the sort of got into our own shell so it in some sense definitely as i said like this has you know collaboration like this and and uh, even other like uh, the people feel like how everybody is connected like how even you know the ordinary people how their effort is so important even uh, today you know like people who deliver and things like that so so i think like in some sense it, it is it is a good thing and it also shows like what the government is like you know if you thought that the government is going to do stuff for you and then i mean new york you know with 100000 and more cases tested which is like you know 10% yeah. of what's there uh, but uh, but that means like the 3500 icu beds i mean a, a statistics like that you wouldn't have known right i wouldn't have known that the whole new york state had 3500 icu beds uh, and and actually the person who cut it over the last 15 years was andrew cuomo i mean now he's he's kind of a big hero but the fact is that he's the person who really cut down like the hospital facilities because you know it is all part of this system it's and a bad product yeah 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 it's a by product like because uh, you know it's a non essential thing it's it's not profit generating so to speak so so it it tells us a lot about our society our government and the world like we you know feel for like you know the people in india like who are like these daily wage workers who are you know unable to get home and and and, and all over the world so so that i think is is definitely a thing i mean obviously there's a lot of suffering yet to come um you know like the way i i read it like the spanish flu actually it went on for two years and it struck a place after a year so yeah. so and 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 life definitely is not going to come back to what it was nobody is ever going to go into a like a movie theater you know i mean yeah I mean, like would you that's it yeah. i and you know i come from a startups background and now like some of the startups don't make any sense you know there is a company that is is doing the co-working for restaurants and that that's it like you can't do that like there is no co-working and there is no one going to restaurants anymore and they're they're actually smart and great and they're they're from New York actually and they're uh, repositioning themselves for creating virtual spaces now mm -hmm. so hopefully they succeed at that but yes like the the existing business models won't work the existing economic system won't work the existing governments the governance and policies it's all cr crashing right now and i think it's a it's a great opportunity to create something better because you know we wouldn't be able to do that uh just like 6 months ago yeah no no for certainly and and we could have had like kind of a sort of plaster tape of normalcy but now actually it's a two way sort either we have something good or we could have you know rampant nationalism and and like uh, things so and 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 uh, it's it's hard to know where that is going to go you know uh, it's it's really hard to know but uh, since this virus doesn't care for anyone it seems like it doesn't care for any race color religion i mean it's pretty much uh, you know going for everyone so that is a kind of should be a uniting call so yeah i think like uh, that that certainly uh, I, I, i mean i'm not glad that it happened i mean it's, it's yeah it it's hard to say that any of us are are happy that that happened but we all see something good coming out of it for sure yeah it is at least and that. it's you know what's crazy the crazy part is that people that are joining us i mean in corona why as a organization or collaboration we all share the same beliefs believe it or not we all say the same things and we've never you know screamed for that we never asked for that it just happens organically and it seems that you know it it's something that we're actually naturally equipped to do and it's just that finally people are freed from all the kind of external factors 
like you know there is no this drowning that keeps you um you know from progressing and now people are just awakening from from this it's it's amazing it re definitely fascinates me and when people ask me for vision that's what i tell them like like it's natural for us to be uh you know collaborative it's natural for us to want to help people and you know it's it's the thing that we're doing now yeah i, I mean just uh, yeah i don't want to take much of it but i'll tell you uh, something a personal story like uh this happened around 11 years ago I was hiking by myself in the Oregon, you know, in the Columbia River Gorge. Basically, I got lost. I had to spend the night in the forest. And oh, wow. I hadn't had food since 12 o'clock. I was at 4,000 feet. It got to 40 around and I just a t-shirt, shorts and spare t-shirt. And it was really cold and it was stormy. Um, it was a very bad situation, right? And I didn't know, like, how the heck I was going to get out. My car was 4,000 feet below, but I didn't, like, it's, it's a great. So the next, I slept for an hour. It was so cold. But when I got up in the morning, I had one thought. You know, just one thought. I, I don't know, like, if it happens, like, when you wake up, that I have to get out alive. And nothing else mattered. Nothing else. Like, you know, no emails, not what people thought and nothing. And, and it is like, it is right now, like, when you come to that crystallized, that one thing, that, that's when, like, I mean, I did manage to come out alive, thankfully, a matter of chance to, I, you know, uh, uh, I went around until I found a way to get down. But, but I think, like, uh, you know, there are, there are these theories, like in history, like only a change will come only through a very traumatic event. And if you look at it, like, you know, the Great Depression, uh, you know, the New Deal or the FDR, I mean, it has to come like from a, from a very traumatic thing and, and nobody wants to be in that situation. But, um, yeah. but, but I think like, yeah, so, so I think like, let's do it. But of course, like we have to focus and, and, and you know, uh, make uh, something concrete and, and get all our skills uh, to the best uh, we can. Uh, so my my thing is my background is uh, I did like I've done like ten years of uh, you know Django and Python and but a lot of data analysis for uh, um, uh, 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 for genetics and things like that. But also uh, more recently in neuroscience, I work my work is uh, I do uh, on my job, which is like uh, AI for uh, MRI images to find early signs of Parkinson's, and and mm -hmm. I'm also uh, doing a graduate study in downstate. Uh, Sydney, where uh, creating a cortical model for Parkinson. So neuroscience is is, is a really my thing. Uh, but uh, so I'm familiar with Python, and uh, I can help in that, and have uh, you know sort of help in organizing projects. Yeah, but. I'm I'm actually what I'm hearing, and this conversation has been fascinating. I've I'm amazed at your diverse uh, skill set and your you know abilities to explain stuff. And I actually, I would say that you're more valuable in terms of delivering uh, explanation and educating people than writing the code. Because we have so many people that can write quality code, but your scale of explaining stuff is just amazing. Which brings me to another uh, point. Um, I have seven minutes here. I'll have yeah. to jump to another call. But um, can you, and I think the link that you've sent me, the, the portal is a good starting point but maybe you can send me all the illustrations, all the stuff, and maybe some notes uh, that you had for the webinar for us to create this uh, you know, page that just explains everything that you've explained on webinar uh, yeah. as, as graphics and, and stuff. And we have so many people that can help on illustrating and graphic design stuff just to create that ultimate page. Yeah, so uh, I was, um, you know, that's how I like to kind of draw a bit at night so i you know like i take a sheet and try to put my thoughts down in a way so that's how those diagrams came out of now the things obviously you know they, i cannot take somebody else's image i can i can like create a document uh, of course one has to know who is the audience like today's audience i assumed like which i think i was you know reasonably feel like the large proportion was people who want to understand the biology and but didn't have a biological background well, now, there was my mom who's actually a doctor a neurologist and she uh, she told me that that was great, but she had a couple of questions immediately, like why why won't you give the uh, reference surfactant aerosol or something to to help with that? And I'm like, I have no idea, <laughs> you know. But um, yeah, but that was great for general audience, which is exactly the audience of Corona Y to mm -hmm. understand the processes and especially for tech people to understand what they're dealing with. 
Yeah, yeah, no, so, so uh, definitely, uh, I mean, that's great to know. And uh, I think I'll have to think about it. But one thing is that that place has become very crowded. You see, you've got these neutrophils, macrophages, and a lot of dead viruses. That that place is packed now. I mean, like you can put in some surfactant and water has come in and drowned it. So it's not that just surfactant won't help. That is, that is sort of an answer, I think. But of course, like, uh, you know, again, like a medical uh, expert would, would yeah. know better. Uh, but but I will, what I will do is that I will uh, certainly build on what I have, which is like this document. But I was one more thing that I was building, and this is something that is not being done. And I believe that this is where machine learning and everything can really be of help. So one thing that I mentioned was these open reading frames. Uh, and, and what I'm trying to say is that the virus, you see, like it, it can make many different mRNAs, and it does do that. It, there's this part, which I didn't explain. I was going to draw it up tonight, like how it, mix up all these RNAs through this really, it tricks our ribosome in, in, in a weird manner. But what it does is that, so uh, some of the RNA may become protein and some not. So we need to understand what those RNAs are, you know, because that those are going to be really targets like any mRNA vaccine or something like that. So, and, and this is where machine learning or, or like even data analysis can really help. So, uh, but I will, what I will do is that I'll create three documents. One is today's talk, which is like just the pathophysiology, like in a, mm -hmm. In, 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 in a simplest, like maybe like two two images per page kind of, uh, you know, a presentation. Honestly, the uh, thing that you've described is enough. I just want it in, in like a single document so we can give it to web people and graphic designers to properly package. Okay, so, so I will do that. I will do that. And also, as I said, that maybe soon I will come up with this other document, which I think mm -hmm. like, uh, and also like some ideas on how, you know, we can perhaps use... Uh, computation to address this question because I think this would be uh, uh, like mRNA vaccines like if they are they, they could be looking into this other thing yeah I agree all right well I this is this is amazing I'm I'm definitely uh, feeling much more hopeful about our abilities to help humanity just having you on board and having you educate people and you you're gonna see like 10x propagation of what you've delivered in terms of the the consequences the second and third order effects like you definitely get the systems thinking right and everything is connected and all of those 700 people they will benefit from me understanding the structure better they will benefit from other team leaders watching the webinar and you've just you've just created the, the vehicle of the even better progress so just let's let's keep on building on that yeah, no, thank you so much. I mean, like, you know, you're making this happen. So I, and also like, you know, putting this together, which I think is like a really, really, I mean, amazing task, even if you're never sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That, that's how I feel, you know? <laughs> All right, man. Thank you so much. Um, you don't mind that uh, I will upload the recording uh, for, yeah. and I'll send this to VT team and I think risk factors team. And there is one more secret team uh, which is called treatments team. And the reason why I'm saying secret is because uh, this is not a team that formed for a Kaggle competition. That was the toxicologist, pharmacologist that uh, joined our Slack from the outside world. And I asked her a couple of things about the hydroxychloroquine and she seemed to resonate. And then she came back and formulated kind of the task of her own, the idea. And then people assembled around and we just decided, you know, maybe it's worth testing our, you know, process or <laughs> randomness or creative chaos on one of these outside tasks and see what happens. So, yeah. I mean, that's another thing is that I told you, like, this is only one. There are, there are many like this. And so exactly. And real strategy. <laughs> exactly. Hopefully we create the template and case study for that. All right, man. Thank you so much. Uh, oh, well, one final thing. Uh, can I, uh, do you want, I'll send you the chat for that I had with Randall because I think like. Yes, that, please. That might help. All right. Okay, Thank bye. You.